Hi everyone, I'm Dave. And I'm Jeremy. And we'd like to welcome you to our Tech Over Coffee podcast. We're so excited to share in this podcast with you. We look at these really important technology topics. We look about look at industry, current events, maybe some recent changes with some tech research, and kind of apply those to the business environment and see how that's impacting business as we know it, or maybe as we used to know it. Yeah. So we have a few topics to kind of get to, but first of all, welcome back, Jeremy. Yeah, I'm back. I hope nobody noticed that I was gone. Um, I, I did. Yeah, I, I feel it. Um, so, just, you know, it's a little bit of a personal topic today, right? Because it's just as much about the tech as it is the people giving you the tech information, right? It's, it's the characters here that we all care about. Um, so I got injured. I managed to, uh, a tech-related topic, actually, electric scooters. Who knew that you could get hurt on them? Yours was like a hovercraft, though, right? Uh, it was. I thought it was right until I hit the ground. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I broke my collarbone about three months ago, give or take, and that's why I've not been here. And the, the footage of that looked really bad. I mean, he's had some pictures yeah. from the hospital, the uh, x-rays. Another it was cool technology break. called the x-rays. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah the good clean break, no, uh, no surgery needed, uh, plenty of R&R, and I'm back in action. I can move my arm, do all sorts of things that I couldn't do for two months. Yeah, we're excited to have you back. We had Jib kind of fill in that kind of, but he did. He, yeah. he filled in big time. While Knocking you were it out of the park. That's right. So we definitely will have a, a rotated uh, schedule now. We'll have Jim mm -hmm. joining us. So we're Brand excited about that. Brand new star and it's all my fault. No, oh, it's thanks to you. <laughs> so we've had a good transition. We had to start with Ben. That was his vision. We've had Jeremy yeah. continuing this and taking it to the next level. And we have Jib participating with the process mm -hmm. as well. And I think next time Jib joins us, he's going to sing that old time song, Welcome Back Cotter or something, you know, kind of. <laughs> Old school. I, I don't know. Is he going to like start his own music podcast? I don't think we do that kind of thing here. That's right. He's not welcome back. Yeah, yeah no. I forget that. No, here, he's so. definitely welcome back. But not back, music. But only talking about technology. That's right. With tech over coffee. And personal topics that affect people like me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, um, getting hurt is a different experience. I've first real like major injury like that. Um, the healing process is a slow one. But uh, believe it or not, you're more resilient. You know, you kind of come back stronger for a little while and, uh, you know, appreciate the things that you couldn't do, like this podcast. Really oh. enjoyed it, and I'm really, really happy to be yeah, back. You seem stronger, man. I, yeah. yeah right. Thank I'm, you. I right. do it with my left because I can use it again. So topics, you kind of have a, yeah, a new range so of some I, things you've been thinking about. I've been, I've been out of commission for a while. I know I've missed some stuff, uh, but... Some really big things happen too, right? Like while I'm laying in bed, we've got billionaires going to space. You've got Tesla getting sued. You've got GM replacing exploding batteries, uh, like all sorts of things. Uh, more and more hacks are happening, right? You've got big focus on uh, cybersecurity. I heard the college has got some cool things going on. That's right. So we have a lot of neat things to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. We'll kind of go in the order you mentioned, billionaires in space. So. Just reading the Wall Street Journal the other day mm -hmm. about how um, Branson is thinking about, is it Richard Branson? Yeah. Uh, the first billionaire in space, I think, low Earth orbit, but it right, counted. Right alongside uh, Bezos, too. Right, right? beat him by I mean, a week or two, week and a half or so. Well, didn't they go, like, yeah, they went separately, didn't they? They yeah, did. Of course, they didn't just hop on the same plane. But right, Branson went Virgin Galactic, mm -hmm. and he was saying the Wall Street Journal just, I think, yesterday that he sees about 10 companies probably getting involved with space space tourism. Mm -hmm. So that sounds exciting just think about yeah. maybe some orbiting hotels or some kind of some restaurants stuff. that you'd go up and eat and come back down. We're going to have cloud yeah. cities, like places you can go hang out and, you know, be not on land. I knew George Lucas was right when he was yeah. planning that stuff out. He's sure. got such a vision that yeah. he could see this stuff coming from so far away. That's right. Uh, it's not called Skywalker for nothing, right? That's right. We'll have to call that first cloud restaurant Lando's or something. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good one. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so you've you've got guys that have they're, – they're really doing it now. You've actually got people that it's like you or me could do it if we only had, I think, a quarter million dollars. Uh, so, oh, to travel. Yeah, to just I was thinking you were buy talking about and creating up. the technology. Oh, the technology. That's a that's easy peasy. I'm saying right. the, the money. money. The money's right. the hard right. part. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, those guys have it in spades, right? They do. Um, and in space as well. In, in space for sure. I mean, the whole goal, right, is to like 
keep making it easier and easier, cheaper and cheaper, right until you can get to another planet and then hop to the next one and just keep going. And there's so many possibilities when you, I mean, I see we're doing more research on uh, Saturn's moons, uh, possible, like there's lots of stuff coming from the Mars rovers that are really cool. I got a, like a drone helicopter that's flying around now. Wild stuff. Yeah, China's on Mars. So mm -hmm. when you think of these billionaires and, and the space tourism, I kind of see space in, in two buckets now that you'll have people like Branson and Bezos um, with Blue Origin and Branson with um, Virgin Galactic uh, maybe having, I don't even know how they'll do it, maybe orbiting hotels, uh, some, you'll fly up and have a nice dinner and fly yeah. back. I mean, there's, so there's going to be unlimited, especially yeah. when you can ferry back to the moon mm -hmm. and you think about there, that'd be a, a great hot spot for just resorts, mm -hmm. obviously research, but yeah. you think of the tourism just so, to get away. So much research and then so much fun for people that want to like hop around and gather some moon rocks, maybe find some cheese. You never know. <laughs> uh, and so then the other bucket, when I think of space, is to me the important stuff, though space tourism will probably is what's going to keep the money going, mm -hmm. but deep space travel, you know, yeah. Elon, and that, that's really moving the needle. Space Many standards you know, of, mm -hmm. of deviation past oh, yeah. where we're at now, that, that's where we need to head to be able to get from the moon into Mars mm -hmm. and asteroid mining and places we haven't even yeah. thought about. It, it's all like a leapfrog, leapfrog effect, you know, yeah. you like take one stone, you move to the next one, and you just keep hopping. Uh, and with the abilities that they're really figuring out now, you know, you have reusable rockets, you have uh, the ability to get into that low Earth, low Earth orbit rather easily now. It's not like it's some big deal. You can just, you know, hop a plane, buy a ticket and do it. And it can actually make travel a lot faster even on Earth. You can hop up, skip over to a whole other continent a lot quicker than just flying straight there. It's just the from like having less uh, air resistance and everything that's involved, right? So exciting stuff. I think space mm -hmm. is going to impact a lot of business activities, not just kind of out of our orbit, but even on ground, right? It'll give yeah. us new technologies and new ways to do things. Bringing so. more resources that we don't really have here, mm -hmm. right? Like if you find a, the right asteroid that's got, you know, whatever mineral or material you want, figure out how to mine that, bring it back home or take it to like a, a moon base or something else where you don't have to take materials from Earth up there, it all kind of works together. And there's so many resources out there, you can get to a point where we don't have to worry about the scarcity that we have here on Earth, and that's kind of the focus. Can you imagine having a foundry on an asteroid? <laughs> we mean, really need some help with some graphics cards, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we really need to figure out how to make more chips. Uh, that's the other thing that's been going on is you've got like a big lack of chips in almost every industry because you've we, we still have a pandemic going on. You still have uh, troubles with supply lines and everybody wants chips. Uh, graphics chips, uh, just silicon chips in general is what people want and need. Just reading the Wall Street Journal again, Toyota is shutting down manufacturing plants because they don't have enough chips yeah. for the autos. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's... Wow, sad different, day. Different companies are taking different approaches. Uh, shutting down your sub, your uh, product lines, probably a better move than, I mean, Ford, I see what they're doing is actually building out the vehicles just without the chips and leaving them in a field. You know, so you have hundreds wow. and hundreds, hmm. thousands of vehicles that are just waiting on chips to go in. And the thing is, is that it's a big line and you have to wait for it. And if there's any sort of disruption on the way, it's just delays. And if you didn't already have the orders in, which a lot of these companies canceled their orders or didn't continue to order them while things were shut down, and so that's kind of why we're in the situation we are now. You've got TSMC that's building out uh, new foundries. I think in the US, they're looking at other countries. I think, I don't know if it was Singapore, one of these countries, or Japan, I think, is, is trying to get TSMC to build a lower nanometer uh, variation so they can just pump out cheaper chips because that's what people need. You know, you don't have to do cutting edge you know, two nanometer, three nanometer chips that are like TSMC is putting out now, which is kind of insanity because you're kind of getting to the point that you can't get below that, really. You know, that's like even smaller than a human hair, much smaller than a human hair. So, you know, it, it's hard work. Yeah, I hadn't thought about it before you mentioned it, but these uh, auto manufacturers, they also have the business side of things, not mm -hmm. just the technology of the manufacturing but unions, and so if they've negotiated yeah. so many vehicles, mm -hmm. wow, to disrupt union negotiations, yeah. and, and maybe you're, they just make them anyway, and yeah, wait. Wow, and then you might need to change how cars are listed. It's not mm -hmm. only the mileage anymore on it, it's gonna be how long has it been in the field? Yeah, or what chip is in it. Um, yeah. Tesla has made uh, 
some differentiations where they've actually gone with other suppliers and have to completely rewrite firmwares, uh, completely you know rework their systems to fit in these new chips, and that's how they've managed to continue making cars. Maybe at not as much as they could have, but you know it's it's a thing that they can pull off because they've got the software engineers. Uh, certain companies like Ford, GM, maybe they're not really tuned for that. I mean, they they make cars on an assembly line and they just keep it going and. If they can then later have to go through and put in new chips, I mean, I saw uh, BMW had to take out uh, certain parts from their cars, radars or things like that. I think I know Tesla took out their radars from their cars a, a little while ago, and some people speculate that it was simply because of lack of availability. Well, and you mentioned autos, the thought of EVs. Mm -hmm. um, that's where we're headed for yeah. sure. Uh, we saw President Biden driving uh, that F-150 EV. Yep. Not quite ready for the consumer but he, I mean, it's it's out there though yeah it's he said low it quantity it definitely but it's out there. moved you know i think from mm -hmm. the back of the white house to the front of the white house that, you know, <laughs> that driveway yes. it worked quite well he said oh yes but um the thought of evs of, of the white house or congress mandating this date where all vehicles or a certain uh, portion of vehicles have mm -hmm. to be evs that was exciting but then also they missed the important part yeah, you got to have the infrastructure, isn't it? You know, you have to have the place that you can uh, charge up your vehicle, right? If everybody's going to be using an electric car, you've got to be able to charge it up. So that infrastructure is, you know, charging facilities. And so the biggest, uh, more publicly available one, because you can't really consider Tesla as, like, publicly available. It's only available to Teslas, which is changing, actually. They've, like, to try to get some of this uh, money that's going to be put out there for this infrastructure, you have to be an open charging system. So Tesla is actually opening up their chargers uh, to other vehicles, and there's a lot of them now. Almost every auto manufacturer has a full plug-in EV. So to be able to then access the Tesla charging stations is huge and a big money maker for Tesla too. And if they can get money from the government to build them out, then they can just make even more, right? But uh, Electrify America is... Uh, really going to be the one that's going to get a lot of this money. Electrify America, the company that was born out of the diesel gate with Volkswagen, uh, where basically because they lied on diesel emissions, they needed to uh, kind of pay that back to people and the earth, basically, you know, try to like encourage more uh, sustainable ways. And rather than like lying about, you know, how clean your cars are, put, I think, $2 billion into building out charging stations across the country. Uh, and that's worked out for them. They've actually sold, I think, half of it to another company. I'm not sure who. Now, are they a nonprofit, or do you know if they've spun off as a uh, for-profit company? That's the thing. I'm not really sure. I think it's they obviously uh, it's just an arm of Volkswagen. Or? It, that's uh, Volkswagen got to maintain control of it. Okay. So it's it's solely owned by them, and that was uh, in lieu of paying fines. And it actually so, could work out, you know, for their betterment. Right. And some people think they're positioned well as a manufacturer, anyways. Mm -hmm if they have a good grasp of the global yeah. marketplace. Well, they, you know, they make good cars and they know what they're doing and they, they have a large production capacity and that's a, that's a big thing. And then to basically avoid having to pay fines for all of their kind of cheating before and then it work Those out in their favor. Words. Well, it it's was. true, yeah. It, it literally the, the was. The data was manipulated, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, we're talking about other uh, EV companies, right? Uh, GM's making EVs. Uh, some of their batteries might have some issues. Uh, we think we talked about that. It, it kind of set fire, burned down a few houses, uh, and I don't know if it's entirely GM's fault uh, because uh, it's linked back to, I believe, it's either the LG batteries, there's like a separator there. Tesla even early on had the same issues, and that was related to uh, uh, something called Battery Gate, where they uh, did software changes to the batteries to slow charging to avoid them from burning down. Uh, and the and government's kind of questioning that now. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, they, they ended up uh, settling a lawsuit uh, for some large sum of money with, I think, 160,000 owners. Um, if your car got slowed down, then you get basically a payout for the fact that your car doesn't charge fast anymore. A couple hundred dollars or something. Yeah, a few hundred bucks yeah. with the lawyers getting the bulk of it. Mm -hmm. But uh, this GM situation, they kind of did the same thing, where at first they tried to, like, you know, avoid the issue. They, like, maximized the amount of charge you can put in the cars to 90%. They put out warnings to owners saying don't park them inside. Uh, really scary, but they were burning down. And uh, a big lithium fire like that doesn't go out easy. Um, yeah, speaking of lithium fires, you know, I'm going to be jumping on so many topics lately. There's so many things and we I've got missed, so many right? more to get to in the future, too. But uh, 
there was a Tesla's got one of the biggest uh, battery uh, backup systems in Australia, and one of those caught fire, and it it burned for four days or something wow. like that because it's a massive battery. And how do you put that out? You basically don't because the way that a lithium fire works is that it produces its own oxygen, so it's its own fuel. It's just it gets to thermal runaway and just goes and goes and goes. So wow. you just have to wait it out basically, uh, throw a bunch of water on it until it cools off, and hopefully it doesn't reignite. So we have some exciting topics uh, in mm -hmm. front of us. I mean, we have everything oh, from space so that's going to be taken off. Um, how can we not talk about Tesla every yeah, week? That's it has to happen. The moment I come back, Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. I got to put this in. Elon is a fan, right? I mean, he's oh, yeah. definitely. Watches every week, I'm sure of it. Most certainly. Most certainly. I mean, why else would we talk about him yeah. besides mm -hmm. he's brilliant, right? Mm -hmm. But I saw that he, him and Mark Cuban had an agreement. Did you catch mm -hmm. that in the headlines? Yeah. yeah. About the Dogecoin? All, all the crypto stuff with them, man. They, they love Doge for some reason. I think they just like messing with people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I heard Mark Cuban's son owns a few Doge. Uh, uh, and of course, Elon really likes to go for the underdog or the underdoge. So... Uh, <laughs> You know, he's there. They've actually come to. They agree that they think it's the best uh, method of exchange out there. Seems questionable um, to pick it as the best, but yeah, it's, it's, you it's know, an option. Gotta say, there's a bigger, nicer one that's out there that's got a lot more actual, you know, people behind it. But hey, you know, Doge is still cool. I like Doge. It's a it's a fun little coin. But remember, there are literally billions of them, billions and billions. Everyone could be a Doge millionaire if you wanted to, but that doesn't. You know, what does that mean? That in 10 cents, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. But Doge is something like 30 cents a coin oh, or yeah, something so it's like gone that. Up, yeah. So yeah. It, it's gone up a lot. And I think a lot of it has to do with big names talking about it. I see Robinhood apparently made like 60% of their money in the crypto space from Doge trading. Amazing. So there's a lot of people behind it. And that is how you make a market is by having enough people be willing to trade it. And if you've got enough willing to buy it, then that means it's got value. So... That's the momentum wrong. right now. So. Mm -hmm. All right, so a lot of neat topics. And Jeremy, oh, yeah. it's exciting that you're back. Mm -hmm. All I right. Love it. Until it's next week, sir. Great to be back. All right.